Hello everyone. Today we will discuss the second stage of hazard analysis. This is still the step of hazard analysis which is the principle number one and seventh step in the HACCP codex logic sequence. So let's start with the risk assessment. So right, stage number two is about risk assessment of the hazard. So if you remember, we wrote down two process steps, uh, receiving and cooking. For each of them, we had some hazards. So now for each of them, we will do a risk assessment. So this is how a risk assessment matrix looks like. It's a combination of risk and severity. Risk is the likelihood of a hazard which can occur or likelihood, likelihood of occurrence of a hazard and severity is the level of danger associated with that hazard. So these are two very different things. Okay, So risk is only the probability and sev uh, severity is the danger associated with that hazard. Together, when they come together, they define the significance of the hazard. So this is how the matrix of risk assessment looks like. This is called as risk assessment matrix. So on the lower level, you have the low severity with low risk. Then in the medium level, you have medium severity and medium risk. And then at the high, you have the high severity and high risk. So let me explain to you very quickly what is the meaning of all those words. Low severity means that the hazard will not cause any disease or any serious injury or serious illness to the consumer. Medium severity will mean that it can cause uh, some kind of a discomfort or disease to the consumer and high severity would mean that it can be potentially fatal or very serious uh, injury can happen to the consumer. On the other side of the coin for the risk, low risk means that it is potentially very improbable that the hazard would happen. Medium risk would mean that this can happen and it has happened in the history or previous past as well and high severe or sorry high risk would mean that it's a very common occurrence. So let me explain again risk is the probability or likelihood of the hazard occurring and on the other hand severity is the actual danger associated with that hazard. Let's suppose the hazard is that a piece of paper or cardboard could end up into cooked uh, meal of chicken. First of all, in this kind of a hazard, it's uh, very unlikely that a piece of paper or cardboard would go into a food product because generally if you implement your prerequisite program or good hygiene practices properly, uh, the physical contamination will be controlled. So in this regards, the likelihood or the risk will be low. And on the other side, uh, that severity side, the severity will also be low because this kind of physical contamination, first of all, is visible. So the consumer can see it and it will not be a food safety risk. And even if somebody puts it in their mouth, it will be soft and will not be causing an injury. So in both the counts, the risk and severity is low for this example. So now let's, let's take another example. If somebody orders beef burger and they want to eat it um, undercooked, there is a hazard of having bacteria like E. coli or E. coli specifically E. coli 0157 in the beef burger. Now this is a different, very different type of a hazard and since E. coli has been associated with beef burgers in the history and it's a very common occurrence, so the likelihood or the risk is high. And the severity is also high because E. coli 0157 can be very serious illness uh, causing bacteria. So this will go up to a, a high, high uh, quadrant of the risk assessment. So as you can see from these examples, uh, the risk assessment is based on the experience of the HACCP team. And that's why if you look at the HACCP team video, and I will leave the link uh, of the video in the description and the card here as well. That is very important that the HACCP team is uh, experienced within the industry where the HACCP is being conducted. Otherwise, all this 
discussion and brainstorming about the hazards will go wrong and the risk assessment will not give you the correct results and uh, there might be a scenario that because of this wrong risk assessment the whole ccp of the hazup or the complete hazup system is a failure one very very important tip which i have for you is that always consider the real life scenarios do not be over cautious at this stage of risk assessment this is the biggest mistake a hazup team can do if a hazup team is inexperienced and they don't know the real life uh, control measures and real life uh, working condition of a business they think that each and every hazard is very severe and has very high likelihood and and as a result there are a lot of significant hazards which will come out of the hazard analysis and which will not be good for the organization uh, you have to be realistic for the uh, doing this risk assessment now if in reality there are a lot of significant hazards coming out of uh, the risk assessment then it means that the prerequisites or the good hygiene practices or the good manufacturing practices have not been implemented properly and there are a lot of uncontrolled hazards in your system so then it means that you should stop the hazard up here stop the hazard study go back fix those prerequisites first and then come back to the hazard and start that okay so this is the end of our uh, second stage which gives you the risk assessment uh now we'll talk about the third stage in the next video which is about the control measures and in the third stage i will also give you an indication that a summary of hazard analysis will be there as well that what is the outcome of hazard analysis and what do you get after hazard analysis see you in the next one